So the AI voice I've been using on this channel, uh, it's no longer an option. They did some update and it sounds way too robotic, so I couldn't put you guys through that. Imagine using this from here on out. Also, I think switching up the AI voice is a bit weird, so here we are with uh, my voice. And it should be for the better, I think. I'll be able to better convey messages and get stuff across. This is a first, though. I'm not used to doing this, but anyways. So because we got a bit of a special video, I want to talk about something a little bit different. Take it back to the bigger picture and why we're here and uh, the opportunity I feel we have over these next months, half a year, year, whatever it is. So I saw this tweet the other day about, you know, Fred Krueger talking about the US debt getting to 100 trillion in 10 years. And when I hear people these days talk about things getting unaffordable, gas prices, food prices, whatever it is, you know, I feel quite bad. But what makes me feel even more bad is that they don't realize um, this is the new norm and it's not going to get better. You know, inflation is well under control now true inflation is printing in the ones and yet you ask the average person if things have gotten better they'll say no it's gotten worse i think of it like two ships on a dock they start off maybe just one notch one degree separated but eventually there'll come a point where the difference between them the distance for every like meter or whatever distance they go forward uh, becomes exponential and i feel like we're at that phase now and you know this was always the consequence of the fiat system it was quite broken from the start it's just that now we're in that parabolic exponential stage of things just rapidly getting worse now there are some caveats i think artificial intelligence you know agi probably arrives by 2030 so that could solve the debt issue but in my opinion there's only one end game and that is a complete monetary reset a new digital currency whatever that is and you guys know this by now but that within itself is gonna cause a bunch of whole new problems and questions that we got to worry about we'll deal with that if that arrives but until then i think right now the only goal is to protect your purchasing power going forward and not become a victim of currency debasement literally get inflated out of your ability to buy so for the average person investing in index funds is actually a pretty good start that's because a lot of the mechanisms behind why we even get currency debasement also results in a lot of these stock prices going up and so overall it's a decent way to keep peg for your ability to buy. For example, if you invest, you know, a million into the S&P 500 today and it's worth 2 million in the future in 10 years, let's say, it's not that you got a million dollars richer, instead you were able to preserve 10 years of your ability to buy. But the goal should be eventually to make everything we talked about so far just obsolete, a non-factor, you know, something you're not affected by. So the conventional way to do that is in absolute terms, uh, which is what most people go for or try to do, the volume, just try to make so much money, so much fiat that you're not affected by the uh, single unit of fiat depreciating some type of business whatever it is just trying to do something where you know you get a lot of money but what we opted for is staying within the markets because remember the market is sort of like the counterpart to this whole broken fiat system like the opposite you know two sides of the same coin and we're trying to outperform the traditional returns of the market and so with crypto that is the most hypersensitive thing to liquidity so you know if we're trying to beat the markets this is ideally where you want to be it's where getting a 10 20x beyond is even possible obviously a lot of risk to go along with it but you guys will understand by now that that risk is worth it in my opinion and in your opinion too because no matter what your intentions are of why you even got here in the first place you sort of came to the same conclusion yourself and because of that you should also give yourself i feel a tremendous amount of credit for you to end up here at all it shows that you know some way or another you were able to conceptualize all of this and actually realize it uh, even though maybe you weren't able to put it into words but now you should be but the one way you won't be able to beat currency debasement is with the job with a paycheck with the salary that is the only guaranteed way to get inflated out of your ability to buy going forward it, it just simply won't be able to keep up the amount of money you make from a job so so it went from you know having a side hustle was sort of like a taboo sort of topic to you know it being encouraged to now in my opinion it's a necessity i would even say it's gone to the point where going to school getting a job having a job that is the side hustle that is just the thing to carry you until you figure out what your main thing is going to be and if you've chosen crypto as that thing i i think that i don't think there's a wrong decision per se as long as you can make it and whatever that is but i do feel like the crypto markets and investing in this asset class is one of the more fair and honestly uh, probable options to to make it in which brings us to this channel 
channel where my goal is to hopefully just assist you in that journey even just a little bit back when the terra luna collapse happened to me it was so obvious but i didn't realize uh, how much of a knowledge gap there was and what really bothered me was there were a lot of big influencers at that time saying things like buy the dip but if you just had even a little bit of knowledge i feel on how terra luna worked you know there, there's no such thing as buying the dip when the peg broke it was programmed to go to zero and so from that incident is when i got the idea to start making content have some sort of platform where i could maybe you know help people out and then again with the whole ftx thing you know eventually in the space you guys will learn this you you make friends and uh, I knew one guy who knew a guy who worked at FTX and he confirmed that the exchange was insolvent. And so for me, it was easy to pull my funds out. But, you know, again, I didn't have a platform and there were other people saying FTX is fine. And then it was Solana going under 10 bucks, which actually made me start making content. Now, that's not really, I'd say, comparable to the other two. But people were calling Solana dead and the next Terra Luna, which that isn't possible. Uh, it, it's quite different. And my whole thing was Sol was still the best and biggest alternative L1. Forget all time highs when it was at $8, you know, even getting to something like 80 bucks. That honestly ended up being probably one of the easiest trades you could have ever taken. So yeah, that, that's why I started making uh, videos. And to make myself clear, I, I don't think I'm an expert, nor will I claim to be. But I do feel that's more encouraging than not. Because then if a guy like me can go from knowing nothing to just making even a little small dent in this whole thing, then I feel like... Uh, Anyone can do it. I've made uh, tons of mistakes. I've gotten some things right. My number one tip though, just don't blow yourself up. You won't believe the amount of people who've been here for years, you know, started off with a couple thousand, ran it up to millions, and then, you know, they drank the Kool-Aid, got way too involved, and then blew themselves up again. I do think that each cycle, you want to maximize your gains, right? Obviously, tomorrow wasn't promised, but I, I think there's a balance. You also need to look forward because I do think the whole liquidity cycles won't go anywhere. It'll probably just get harder each time. And I think that's actually happening. This cycle is probably the most difficult. Back in the day, you could just buy anything and it just went up. Now, some people have been buying coins. Uh, that too, what they presumed would be strong fundamental coins, whatever it is, that have barely even gotten off their 2022 lows. But now bringing it back to this cycle. Okay, what do I think is going to happen? Intrinsically, there are a lot of issues macro wise it doesn't look good uh, but that doesn't matter in my opinion as long as the music is playing you gotta keep dancing the markets are going up and as long as that's the case i don't think you can afford to you know be a top caller if the markets top they top okay then what right but if you're not long what are you short so because of that i've expressed a bunch of times by now that things aren't looking that good but still i i'm fully long and i feel like you have to be fully long and i still don't think it's too late if we get a normal healthy cycle where liquidity gets the chance to rotate as much as it typically does i do think it won't be an everything up cycle i do think a lot of coins will you know it probably dead cap bounces across the board if you look at their previous highs from last cycle but if there's still a relative resemblance of what we got last time i think the fact that we still have no idea who the main altcoin winners are going to be of this cycle i think presents a tremendous opportunity as of right now it seems like maybe tau and sui are two of these new cycle winners when we consider last cycle projects like cardano getting to a hundred billion Solana getting to 70, 80 billion, Terra Luna getting to 40, AVAX 30, Polygon 20, Uniswap 20, BNB doing what it did, all these new crypto last cycle doing that, and yet this cycle, nothing's even come close. If you want to say that we're not going to get that this cycle, that's different. That you can argue. But if you're saying that we're going to get a normal bull market, whatever it is, but it's too late to invest in some of these higher caps that have run, I don't think that makes sense. And as for meme coins, um, my whole thing is I'm a bit indifferent. Like, I don't care that much. But if your conclusion is that, you know, meme coins aren't good and that, you know, you're not going to be a part of it, I, I think that's a mistake. If meme coins are running, you have to respect that. And frankly, I would even say you have to take part. I'm not saying make it your livelihood and, you know, completely pivot to meme coins, but I think not having exposure is pretty ill-advised. But I think we're in a unique situation because the way it's setting up, right? So right now it's October. Q4, bullish, whatever, right? I do think we finish quite, quite bullish in this Q4. Whether we top, I don't know. But I think when you combine that with the fact of where these so-called meme coin blue chips are, you know, I'm looking at Pepe at 4 billion, Whiff at 2.6, Popcat at 1.3, Brett at 1, Mog at almost 1. From this point on, either these meme coins are going to run very hard. I'm talking probably like tens of billions or they've topped. And obviously no one knows. You got guys like Ansem saying Whiff to 100 billion or whatever. And other 
people fairly bearish on memes. But from this point, I think it's worth a bet because the invalidation is clear. You know, if these coins really start coming down, you might take up to a 50% loss. So as always, right, have your risk management in place. But the upside, I feel, if we do get that type of meme coin super cycle, you can't get a meme coin super cycle without one of these major memes not touching, at least in my opinion, like 50 bill. And so the way this whole meme coin narrative has synced up with, I feel, the timing of the markets as well, 2024, having year Q4, going into next year. If I was a betting man, I think there's a decent chance that happens. So that's why I am exposed in that way. Uh, but for meme coins, I think that is the most sort of efficient way to get exposure while still being, you know, relatively uh, reserved in, in how degenerate you are. I also think gaming, uh, you want to pay attention. Off the grid just came out. Look, if you want to get rich in crypto, they say focus on one sector. I agree. Uh, I think gaming from this point on is an amazing shout. GTA 6 is coming out next year. The likelihood that they don't have any integration, blockchain integration is, I'd say, pretty much zero. So if you literally forget the rest of crypto, pay attention to only Bitcoin, obviously, and the macro conditions, you know, if they, if they allow things to even get going. But if they do and you focus completely on become a master of gaming, then I think you will probably do very well. And let's be honest, uh, a lot a lot of what we're trading is Ponzi's. Uh, they don't work. They don't solve any real world issues but gaming is the one where that intersection not only makes sense but it, it will inevitably happen but just a simple start of imx beam and super it, it's cliche cringe everyone's saying it but it is kind of obvious and i think just the market caps and and where they can get to yeah for me I, like you don't need to get more complicated than that i feel and as for artificial intelligence i'll actually leave that for a separate video where i can uh fully fully geek out but uh, what i'll say for now is i'm paying attention to some small caps netmind is very cool uh zero one labs is i think very cool as well i i think the way this micro cap is running in tandem with tau uh, is something i would look out for and based ai is, a, is another one i wouldn't pay too much attention to other ai big caps i don't think it's worth it at this point i do think they will uh inevitably become bit tensor subnets and if they don't, they're really missing out. But I'll get more into that entire thesis. That's probably going to be like a 30 minute, one hour video. I don't know. But yeah, for AI, I would just focus on Tau as the big cap and then micro caps. And I, I feel like you'll do well with artificial intelligence in that sense. I'll leave it there for now. I don't, I don't even know what to title this video. What did we even talk about? Uh, don't pay too much attention to the titles. I'd say focus on what I'm saying, what I'm actually saying this time. Yeah, hopefully it's not too much of a difference or shock. I understand if some of you go like, what is this? But eventually my voice you know it should it should uh should become used to it whatever i don't know i'm not doing the youtube voice though i can't i just have to talk like this but yeah consider subscribing i have a lot of cool topics planned and i think i could start uploading more as well so yeah but until then bye